Hi, I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook. Today I want to talk about how you can accidentally cause excessive tool wear when you do what many think of as the conservative thing by slowing down your feed rate. This excess tool wear is caused when your tool starts rubbing instead of cutting. I want to show you the underlying geometry that causes this to happen so you can avoid these tool life problems. You may have come across this rubbing term before in conjunction with milling. Some people call it burnishing. It's what happens when your end mill stops cleanly slicing into the material being cut and starts rubbing against it instead. Now, I know you're wondering, how does that happen? Think about a knife with a very sharp blade. You can imagine laying the edge of the blade against something and slicing off a piece. It's kind of like whittling or maybe peeling an apple. And as you start trying to slice thinner and thinner slices, what happens? How thin can you go? It turns out there's a very simple geometric description of when the slice has gotten too thin and you're no longer going to be able to slice cleanly. That's when rubbing starts. Let's take a look. Here's a diagram of two cutting edges. Think of them as having the same cutting edge at two different magnifications or scales, like you're looking at it through a microscope. The one on top is cutting a deeper chip than the one on the bottom. Note how the edge is shown as a radius. When we handle a sharp edge knife, we think of that edge as coming to a point, but it really doesn't. If you look at it under a microscope with enough magnification, what you would see is that it has a radius. And it's that radius that can cause rubbing. Now, what's important to note in the drawing is the relationship of the center of the radius to the top of the chip being cut. I've marked that center line as a yellow line. In the top drawing, the center line is right down on top of the material. When the center line is at or below the top of the material, you get good cutting action. If this is the top of the material, your sharp edge is getting under the material with enough force from the top of the edge to peel the material up and slice it off cleanly. Now take a look at the bottom drawing. That yellow center line is way above the top of the material. It's like the material is only seeing the bottom of the cutting edge and the cutting edge doesn't get underneath the material. Instead, it's too high to get under the material, and that causes most of the cutting force to push down on the material instead of peeling it up. What happens is that edges plow along the top of the material, mostly trying to rub and scrape up a chip by friction. It's obvious now why this phenomenon is called rubbing. It's because the cutting edge is literally rubbing instead of cutting. And what happens when we have mostly friction? Well, friction causes heat, and heat is very bad for tool life. You've probably heard that when you have proper feeds and speeds, most of the heat is taken out in the chips. That's very true. But with rubbing, most of the heat is staying in the tool. And as that tool gets hotter and hotter, particularly the edge, it starts to soften and dull. You get a vicious cycle from that with the dull edge developing an even bigger radius which rubs even worse and pretty soon pff, your tool is trashed. Okay, how does all this happen and how do we avoid that rubbing? Going back to our diagram, it's all about your chip thickness relative to the radius of your cutting edge. Now the technical term for chip thickness is chip load. Cutter manufacturers regularly tell us the maximum chip load for their tooling. It's in the catalogs, you can look it up. With too much chip load, you'll break the tool, so you don't want to exceed their recommendations by much. But it's too little chip load that causes the rubbing. Your chip load is set 
by the relationship of your feed rate to your spindle RPM. If you feed faster while keeping the RPM constant, you're going to increase the chip load. And if you feed slower, you're going to reduce the chip load. So feeding too slowly relative to the RPMs is what gets you into the rubbing zone. Now, cutter manufacturers tell us how much is too much, but how much is too little chip load? My feeds and speeds calculator, G-Wizard, has a built-in rubbing warning when your chip load gets too low. Saves you a ton of trouble in that respect. And to build that, I did a ton of research on rubbing and chip loads and came up with some very conservative guidelines. For most milling cutters, you want to keep the chip load at or above about a fifth or 20% of the maximum chip load. For really sharp cutters, you can go lower, but it's very hard to quantify sharpness, so be conservative. Here's another important tip. If you're using micro milling cutters, anything less than an eighth of an inch in diameter, keep the chip load so it's more than one third of the maximum. Those small cutters edges are not as sharp relative to their smaller scale. What they're doing is so much smaller that this is why you may read that the rake on micro cutters is more negative than larger cutters and you actually need to calculate your feeds and speeds differently as a result. So, if you avoid letting your chip load fall too low, your tools will last longer and they won't get too hot and that's our tip for today. Thank you.